Sorry, for some reason I turned off my iPad on next week. And we know the total sales was 383000 So how do we find M? Hmm, well, we're going to have to just distribute that thing. Right? So that gets us... 100,000 minus 200M is 383,000. Um, go away. Oh, and I forgot the M here, sorry. So then now we have, that makes us have Um, let's see, 4950 minus 200, that is negative 150.5 M equals 383,000 divided by 400,000, that is 0 0.96, so 0 0.96 divided by 150, okay. Oh, I did the thing that I... Never mind. It, I meant 383,000. I did divide it on accident. Minus. That would be 17,000 divided by... So, this is not zero, 0. 0.96, sorry. It is 17,000 negative divided by 150. That is approximately 113 fans. Okay. So there you go. I, sorry about that. It's a little bit tricky of a problem. Um, all right. Draw a pie chart for the groups. Well, the age groups. What we see here, so you might want to pause the video take note of that. I um, can't show two things at once. But so we see... 21 to 30, that was 577 out of 2,000, all right? 577 divided by 2,000, that's how we find the percent. That is about 29%. So that's going to be a little bit more than a fourth. So um, might not be quite that much. Be like, You would never have to do a pie chart. I just did this because I didn't want multiple choice. So we could just say... 21 to 30, and we, can, we need to say the percent. It's about 29%. Now, 31 to 40 is 989. That is pretty much 49%. So we can just do this. So we can say 31 to 40. That is about 49%. And then we see 41 to to 50, that's 291 divided by 2,000. That's about 15%. So, let's see, 29 plus 49 is 78. So we have 22 remaining. So 15 out of 22, that, that's about 68 of what we have left, 68%. So, we'll just do like this, maybe. This will be 41 to 50, and we already know that would be 51 to dead. <laughs> so that's about 15%. So 100 minus 29 minus 49 minus 15 is 7, so that's about 7%. And there you go, that's the pie chart for that. All right, now, oh, what's the area of this thing? All right, pay attention to this one. This one has something that can be tricky. So you might just think, all right, 14 times 6 plus 11 times 7. Uh-uh, because that overlaps. You can't do that. That's a common mistake. So we just will do this. Start out with this part. All right, 11 times 7, that is 77. And now we've already done that whole part, so let's just do this part. It's not 14. It is So if this part's 7 and the whole thing's 14, then this part must also be 7. So 7 times 6 is 42. You add that together, you get 119. That's the actual area. All right. What is angle FHG? Um, all right, that's the one that has a question mark by it. All right, well, once again, like before, we know that this whole thing 
must be 180. So 180 minus 152 will get us this. And so that is 28 degrees. Now, if you see this right angle, that means that the question mark and the 28 have to add up to equal 90. So 90 minus 28 is 62, which is what our 62 degrees, which is what our question mark is, FHG. Oh, hmm. MacGyver's friend Pete made a wave with the Gyvemograph, but MacGyver realized it was bomb and kicked it out the window. After it exploded, the wave was different. Look at the equations for the waves and determine the translation due to the explosion. Okay. Well, if you notice, sometimes the word problems, they have things that don't really matter. But, you know, so before the explosion, it was that if you see a difference, we have a negative 2 and we have a negative 4. That just means down 2. Now, if it was in the parentheses, and that would be a different story, then it would really be right 2. Okay, solve. Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to type it in the calculator. We're not going to do that stupid thing, whatever they're trying to make us do. So, if you didn't know, to get a fraction like this, to do actual fraction in a Desmos, or, sorry, not Desmos, in a TI-84, you can do alpha, and then you do y equals, and then just click on the fraction. That's what I always do. Okay, I'm typing it in, I'm typing it in. Oh, well, I already have the answer, so I know it's right. I'm not going to waste our time. So I'll just say what it actually is, which is 10.61, or 621. That's the answer. All right, what's the value of sine angle? Oh, here's our trigonometry. All right, well, we always, something good to remember is Sokotoa. Hopefully you remember what that is. But this is sine, cosine, tangent. And this is telling you how to find the sine of an angle. You do opposite over hypotenuse. To find a cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, to find tangent of an angle opposite over adjacent. So what do these things mean, opposite hypotenuse and adjacent? Hypotenuse is always the longest thing that's across from the right angle. So we'll just write a h there. Opposite is always the thing that's opposite of the angle. That kind of makes sense. So we'll write an O there, and A is just the whatever the other thing is. So we, we got to find sine of the angle, we can do O over H. Well, we know what H is, but we don't know what O is. Well, how do we figure it out? Well, we can do Pythagorean theorem, because we know. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's also something good to know. So hopefully you're writing these things down if you didn't know already. Hope, there are some right triangles that are common to remember, so I already know this is 8. But, you know, let's just do it anyways. So, A and B, A, we can just say this is A. It doesn't really matter because commutative property. So, C is always the hypotenuse, so we can do 70 squared. So, this is 225 plus B squared equals 289. We're trying to get by, B by itself. B squared equals 289 minus... 64. Square root of 64 is 8. So that's how we know this 8. And so we just plug that in. Uh, usually they just want a fraction, so we can just say 8 seventeenths. There you go. Done. Not that hard, really. What percent of this thing is shaded? This is a kind of problem that really seems complicated to me. But it's not actually. So you might... At first, you might be tempted to think, oh, let me just count the squares. But then you're like, oh, well, I can't tell. Is that like a 4 nineteenths of a square? Like, or, and you might be confused. But all you have to do is do total area, if you ever see something like this. Total area minus uh, the, well, never mind. That would be if you were trying to find the non-shaded. But uh, we can start out by finding the area of the total thing. And we can just say that each thing is one unit, okay? So let's count how many th things there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the area is 56. Ah, accidentally erased that. 56 whatever. Who knows? We don't. 
care. We'll just say inches squared. That's the area of the total thing. Now we can find the area of the triangles and that is base times height divided by two. All right, the base, that's three. The height, that's eight, or sorry, seven. So 21 divided by two is the area for this, which is 10.5. Now over here, we have two, three. Six divided by two, three is the area for this. So the total area of that's shaded is added, add those together, that is 13.5 inches squared. But that's not what it asked, it said the percent. So the percent is part over whole of something. And then, well, you would do times 100, I guess, okay. So part, 13.5, whole, 56, times 100. All right, let's see what that is. 13.5 divided by 56 times 100, 24% shaded. So it's not really that hard, as you can see. You just have to find the areas and then percent. What is X? Oh, dang it, look at this stupid thing. Hmm. We're gonna have to do some dumb things on this, just telling you. Ah, 257, okay, gotta zoom this thing out. All right, I should have done enter key more so I could have more room. All right, let's first just, this thing doesn't have any variables, so let's just do it, work it out. Uh, six times 17 squared, that's 1734. And we'll just get it out of the way. Let's just divide it out to make it not there anymore. 257 divided by 1734. Hmm, that's uh, about 0 0.15. So now our new thing that we have here, 6.67 times 10 to the 3x minus 5 equals 0 0.15. Yeesh. Well, let's divide by this 6.67 to get it out of the way. 0 0.15. 1, 5 divided by 6.67, 0 0.02. So now we just have this equals 0 0.02. Ooh, now what do we do? We're, well, we're going to have to... Here's another thing to write down if you didn't know it. I know there's a lot of things. This is a thing that's very useful. Log A, B, C equals log... Or, sorry equals a to the c power equals b. That's the same thing. So you can just use these and switch the things around. So we, we don't want this anymore. We want this because we're trying to find uh, c. Um, so we need to get c by itself, which is 3x minus 5 in this case. Now, um, the thing about this is, if you're typing this in the calculator, if you have TI-84, you can do math, and then A, then push A, or you can just scroll down to A, where it says log base, so you can choose your log base. But if you have an ordinary calculator, what you're going to have to do is just log B divided by log a to get that instead um, which I don't unfortunately have enough time to explain right now but if you want to know that just post it in the comments if you want more information about that but anyway so I said a to the C equals B then we can do a B C for the log so I know that might seem weird but we're just using them as variables so a is 10 so we do log base 10. Oh, luckily that's what it de is default on your calculator. So if you push the log thing, you don't see a base, but it just is 10 already. Um, B is 0 0.02 and X, or sorry, C is 3X minus 5. So that's why we did it. So we could make it simpler. So now let's just do log base 10 of 0 0.02. So like I said, do math and then click log base if you're on a TI-84 or you can just do log 0 0.02 divided by log 10. And what do you know? Oh, wait. 
Well, we don't have to do that because the log, is, the base is already 10 anyways. Okay. So, because that, that does the same thing. So now we have negative 0 0.7, or, ugh, sorry, negative 1.7. So now we add 5, so 1.7 plus 5, 3.3, and 3.3 .3 divided by 3, x is 1.1. So that was kind of a dumb problem, but you know, sometimes they are. All right, which is true for all integers d? So this is saying basically what, in all cases, what is, which one of these is true, no matter what number you do. So if we, how we do this is we test and we plug in numbers for d, but they have to be the same for both d's because it's the same thing. So let's just do this, 8, 8. Let's just try that. So is 8 less than or equal to 9? Hmm, yeah, it is. All right, let's try something else. Let's do 0. All right, same thing, and that works. Hmm, what about negative 2, negative 2? Yep, it works for that. Hmm, so we you just sometimes, uh, let's just try another one. So far, that looks pretty good. Let's try this one. Um, let's just do one. Oh, I was on a racer. All right, so that would be one is greater than the square root of two. No, that's not true. So uh, let's try um, four. Four is not greater than 16, so it's not that. So it's A. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky because sometimes you're like, oh, I need to find one that's not right. But we didn't need to keep staying on A. We just moved on the board. Okay, oh, hmm, what's this? Uh, what, so it's saying, if one cubic meter equals 2,407 pounds, what is the weight of this thing, if full? So first we have to find the volume. So that's the volume, that's a weight. So let's find the volume of this and then we'll convert it to the weight. So this is really just in conversion after we find it. So the radius we see is two. The height is uh, four. All right, now we're gonna do four times four times pi, basically. I just did it backwards though. But. So the volume is 50.24 cubic meters. Now we have to convert this. So when we're doing a conversion, We we'll do this. So we we do fifty point twenty four meters, and we have to multiply it by our conversion factor, which it told us. The unit that you don't want, you put on the bottom. We don't want that anymore. Too bad. We do want this. So that's for one um, cubic meter. It is twenty four oh seven. So we do, that's really just 50.24 times 2407, which is 10,399.28 pounds. And there you go, that is the answer. What's the hypotenuse? Hmm. Well, we just first have to find the lengths, and then we can use Pythagorean theorem. That's five, that's 12, I already know this is 13. That's a good, good triangles to know that there are always are, are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17. Those are ones I commonly remember. But if you didn't remember, you could still do Pythagorean theorem. We could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So that is... So c squared equals 169. Square root of 169 is 13. So there you go. That is what it is. All right. Which of these has a vertical line of sy symmetry, no matter how it's turned? Well, what is vertical line of symmetry? Well, so if something, there was a line gone through it, and you could fold it, and it would be completely even. Well, no matter what you do for a circle, that's what it's like. An ellipse, if you think about it, what if the ellipse was like this or something? Oh, okay. Trash can that. All right. 
then if you folded it, it then it would kind of look like this. Like it's kind of hard for you to draw, but that's not, so that's not true. And if you think about it for a square, well, it would if it was like this, but what if it was turned slightly like this or something? Uh uh. So, circle is the answer for that one. All right, what's the vertex of this thing? Well, the vertex is when, when it's something like this, it's going to always be the thing that's by the x and the thing that's out of the parentheses. But the thing in the x, you change the sign of it. So you might want to rewind that if you didn't hear what I said. The thing that's in the x, things that, that's, the thing that's in the parentheses, the thing that's not in the parentheses. Okay, why is it not erasing? Or not undoing, and then it does it all at once. Okay. Uh, we don't forget about this. I mean, we don't care about this stupid thing. We don't care about this stupid thing either. We care about this and this. So thirteen five fifty seven. But hang on. Well, since it was negative, see, we make it positive. We always do that to whatever's in the parentheses. We make it opposite of what it was to find the vertex. But we keep that the same. Oh, so it's sorry. It would be negative five fifty seven because it already was. So keep that the, the sign of that the same, but you change that. All right. One, one side of... Oh, my gosh. Well, you're going to have to see that weird picture some other time. I'll just do this. All right. One side of the square has a length of 14 meters. I would automatically write that, okay? Oh, well, it's a square, so we know both sides are that. And it might ask us to do that. Oh, sorry, Nuts. Uh, 196, sorry. Alright. Dang it. This thing's being so slow with the... Undo. Undo, come on. Alright. A rectangle has the same area as it, so we know that it's going to have to have an area of 196 but it has a width of 17. So what is the length? Well, all we have to do is 196 divided by 17. And that is 11.53 meters. I'll just put it down there for now. Hmm, what's this? The average weight of the people at the Phoenix Foundation, which there's 10 people, is 160 pounds. When light, when light Giver is excluded, the average weight is 175 pounds. What is Light Giver's weight? Hmm, that seems weird. Well... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll just have to zoom this out. That's the only thing I can do, because there's not a lot of room to write. Um, so, well, basically we know that all of the 10 people times 60, or 160, that, that's the total weight. Or, sorry, no, that's the average, so that's all of their weights added together. So yeah, pretty much it is the total weight. But, um, so, but then we, we see that when MacGyver, or Light Giver is excluded, it is 175. So the new total weight is 1575. Ooh, so Light Giver is only 25 pounds. Ooh. Well, he's definitely like Ivor. If you see, he's on a feather. Yeah. He can't... He doesn't even fall down when he's on feather. All right. MacGyver starts out with 11 Swiss Army knives. How long until he has 54 in days? Here's an equation that we can use. Well, the thing that has a zero by it is always the, what you start out with. And uh, this is the total amount, so we put this right here. And we're trying to find D, all right? So we do 354 divided by 11. 354 divided by 11. That is 32.1, or actually 32.2 if you round. 
And now we have this. Oh, but we remember the log thing I said earlier? We use that again. This is our C, this is our A, this is our B. So we do A, B, C, log A, B, C. And of course I wrote that too big. Let me try that again. Log A, B, C. Okay, now we have to multiply by three. And so D is three times the log of two, or sec the second log, I guess. I don't know how you would really say that. That's log base two of 32, or two. And once again, if you have a basic calculator, do log of 32 divided by log of two for that part. But I have right now a TI-84, so I'm just going to do the other thing that you can do. Um, so it would take him about 15 days. And it's not, these aren't, there would be answer choices. So just saying when you, when you have answer choices, you can test them. So you can plug that in. We could plug that in for D and it could save us time. If, but I did this to show you how to do the problems, not to do shortcuts. But sometimes there are shortcuts, just so you know. All right, simplify. We're going to have to factor this out. So if you don't remember factoring, we're going to do product sum from top and the bottom. So what two things uh, multiply to equal uh, negative 3 but add equal 2? Well, that is 1 and 3. 1 times 3 is negative 3 uh, if one of them were negatives. But how do we get it to be positive 2 if we added them? Well, if we did positive 3, because positive 3 plus negative 1, that's really minus 1, is 2. And negative 1 times positive 3 is, in fact, um, positive 3. All right, now, here on the bottom, same thing, all right? I can already think of 7 and 9 that would equal 63. How do we get to be positive 2? We, once again, do a positive 9. And... That's actually it. That's completely simplified. Find the missing part, or the length of the missing part is what I should say. These lines mean that it's equal. All right, so eight feet, three inches. Well, we gotta divide that by two. Eight feet and three inches, that is really 99 inches. How do we figure that out? Eight times 12 plus three. All right, so 99 divided by 2, so that we know it's going to be 49.5 inches, but that's not how we, we need it to be the same way, so let's do feet inches. That's really 4 feet, 1 and a half inches, because 4 times 12 is 48, plus 1.5 is 49.5. What is x plus y? Hmm, this seems like a tricky one. Well, all we have to do is make this simplified, and then we can figure out what x and y are. So let's start out. We have to do the correct order of operations. We have to do this first. So it would be 1 third equals, or one, sorry, 1 third plus 1 30 second. To add these, we have to make them have the same denominator, and the only thing we can do is 96. That's the smallest number we can do that goes into both of them. So... We, this would end up being um, uh, 396, or sorry, 32, 96, and this would be 396. If you check that into the calculator, that does the same thing as one third and one third second. So it's really 35, 96. So then now we just realized that x is 35 and y is 96. So 35 plus 96, that is 131. So x plus y is 131. What is the 372nd digit in this? Hmm. Well, the thing that we have to do for this is we have to, whenever you have something like this, and these are kind of common ACT things, you have to do um, Some, whatever the number is that they tell you and number of digits. 
we, that's what we start out by doing. So 372 divided by 4 is what we're going to do, because there's four different digits that are repeating. And that gives us 93. Now, since there are four digits, the possible answers that we could get are something point... Uh, hang on. The pos since we're dividing by 4, the possible things we could get are something point zero, something point two five, something point five, and something point seven five. So that is one fourth through the way, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. Well, that makes sense. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. So that means it's the first digit, the second digit, the third digit, or the fourth digit. If you get an answer with that. 93 is really point zero, so it's going to be the fourth digit, which is four. So four is the answer. All right. Here's the last one that I did. I know that there's actually 60 questions, but I just, like I said, this is all I wanted to do. All right. To promote a new brand of vacuum cleaners. A vacuumist store will run a promotion using a jar containing four balls that are 9% off, three white balls that are 19% off, and two green balls that are 38% off. John Fishman and his competitors will randomly select a ball. Given that a new vacuum is $46, what is the average discount that the store will need to give? So we got a lot of things here. So let's see. We have four red balls. They are 9% off. We have three white balls. They are 19% off. We have two green balls that are 38% off. So we basically have to count. We have to figure out what would the store have to give for all of these. And then we have to divide it by the average. So what's the total amount of balls that there are? There are nine total when you add those together. So we... Let's see. So we, 46, we're going to have to do um, 46 times the percent as decimal. So that would be 0 0.09, 0 0.19, 0 0.38. But we also have to multiply this by how many there are. There are four, there are three, there are two. And then I'll write that to decide what the total is when you do that. So, 46, 46 times 0 0.09 times 4, that is 1656. 46 times 0 0.19 times 3, that is 26. Hmm, yeah. All right, now 46 times 0 0.38 times 2, that is 34.96. All right, now we add those things together. And we divide them by 9 to get the average. All right, 16.56 plus 26.22 plus 34.96 divided by 9. That is, in fact, an average of the store would have to give 875. And if you see, this is John Fishman using the vacuum that he must have gotten with the discount. How cool.